Okay, welcome back. Vintage Showcase time. This is second showcase out of three for 2023. Uh, I wanted to try to play an Atraxa deck, but I just really wasn't very confident in uh, any of them uh, to the degree that I was willing to play them in a showcase. Uh, so we're going to play Pio today. This is my build of Pio for the current metagame. Uh, I think Lavinia is extremely strong. I think Teferi has a lot of utility in the current permanent-based uh, format, and also obviously still uh, pretty good into the uh, spell-based decks as it you know, makes all your stuff uncounterable. Uh, Dressdown is definitely at its worst that it's been in a long time, just because Saga is kind of falling out of the format, Collector Oof has kind of already fell out of the format, but Mono White still exists, and, uh, I would rather play Dressdowns than I would rather, I would rather play Dressdowns than main deck like Swords. Um, I like having a card that pitches to Force of Will and Cantrips and all that jazz. I think it's a lot better in this deck than, than Swords would be in the main. We are still gonna play the Balance, though, as it's a very powerful spell and it's definitely good into the current metagame. Uh, sideboard is pretty normal. Sphinx, we got Karn for the Mirror, Negation for the Mirror, Opposition Agent for Saga and Doomsday, uh, just a couple Hercules recalls for Shops, a variety of uh, white removal spells. I'm going to try an ending today uh, as a kind of more of a flexible slot. can hit like Renin 6 and Oath in the Oath decks, but it can also be good against Shops. Uh, probably not as good against Mono White as something like Swords of Plowshares would be, but that's fine. We are going to play Fragment Ties. I do think it's important to have like a really solid Null Rod answer uh, for Mono White. So only three Fluster Storms because I don't think there are that many matchups where you want four Fluster Storms right now. Uh, and then some Graveyard Hate and a Basic Planes to go with our Flooded Strands so that we can cast our Swords of Plowshares off of Basic uh, Fetch Basic. Uh, yeah, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. This is my PO deck and uh, we're going to hopefully try to do the magic today. I am going to try to make a conscious effort to look at chat less and interact with chat less and play slower. Um, I think a lot of my problems recently on stream have stemmed from me just making, or, you know, not paying enough attention to the game or making decisions decisions too fast. So I'm going to try to actively play um, more level-headed magic today. We'll see how that goes. If you'd like to see your deck played on this channel, check out the Patreon link in the description below where you can find all the information you need to submit a donation deck list. Let's battle. Okay, let's do it. Round one. Um, yeah, this has turn one Narset with Lotus, a plethora of artifact mana to get a Narset uh, to have a Pia, so let's keep this hand. Um, I wonder if there's any consideration to going Mox plus Lotus. It does obviously play more into Mindbreak Trap. But I do get to save a blue mana, which seems really important here, because if I save a blue mana, there's a chance that I can PO immediately. Let's do the quick... So if I play this and this, and then I have one blue mana floating, I could technically PO on the first turn, but without Fluster. It's probably worth it. I should probably still play my land out in case my Lotus gets negated. So let's do that too. All right. So I was unable to find a PO, but I did find a Ponder, which goes really well with Fetch Land here. So let's do Ponder. Don't think I need an Opal. Uh, dress Down, Opal, Fetch Land. Do I want any one single one of these cards? I guess it's fine to just take a dress down and we'll leave opal on top in case I want opal. 
I guess we'll play out the mana curve this way. I don't have any forces, so this way if my opponent plays turn one Thalia or Archon, I have the ability to still dress down end of turn and make a powerful play on the second turn of the game. I think that makes sense. It's very likely I fetch away the Opal, though. Though the Opal is not even that bad in this situation because... I don't have a blue mana. Okay, so it is shops. I thought it might be. Hmm. Certainly an issue. Revoker is so bad for me. Uh, definitely going to fetch, though. Let's go get our basic island. Uh, I could just dress down in response to this so that I don't get anything named. It's probably correct. It's a little bit of an awkward situation, but it's probably still right to just give them a blank 2-1. And this is a sphere. Not that we could do anything about a sphere anyways, so... Yeah, I mean... At least I didn't cut the second Hercules from the board. I had considered doing that. So pretty hard to play through PO here. I don't have a Hercules in my main deck, so... I'm pretty bad in a pretty bad spot. Like, I have a good mana situation, but I don't have a great board. I do have a PO, but I can't deal with this sphere without something like a Teferi, which I actually can't cast. Drew Vamp. So... Huh. I don't know if Vamp is even better than just, like, going Opal here. Like, I could Vamp... And then vamp for, I don't know, Tinker or something, but. I think we win this game with Mentor, probably. So we probably have to vamp for Mentor if we were to do that. And then I can't cast Mentor. So I might just take this Opal. And unfortunately, it's really still kind of bad because I can't really afford to PO here. Hmm. There's no way for me to replay anything, so. Maybe I still, maybe I PO and save this Narsa if they attack it. That could be happening. This is definitely the downside of playing no Hercules in the main. There is not a lot of shops happening right now, so it's not like unreasonable for me to not play Hercules in the main, but there's definitely a downside. They attack Narset, so I'm going to save my Narset and draw four. These cards are really good if I had the ability to remove the sphere. I can just F6, though, because I don't have any way to stop this. Cage in the main. Interesting. Golos deck, assume. Second sphere is really bad for me. Okay. Hmm, this is just like the the real cost of not playing Hercules in the main. A million wastelands, but I only have a 2-1 as a clock. We do have a mana crypt in play, obviously, though. Um, we just need to find Mentor, basically. Narsa doesn't find Mentor, which is kind of annoying. How do I progress? No Hercules in the main is just such a beating. If I cast Yogwill, I can go Black Lotus plus land. Oh, no, I can't because there's a cage. <laughs> uh, so no Yogwilling either. Uh, I mean, I could play the I could play the Underground Sea for what it's worth. Uh, if I wanted just to hit a land drop this turn. I think at the very least, we're going to want to play Opal. Maybe the answer is just Narsa. Maybe it finds Demonic Tutor. Found Time Walk Force. So I'll just take Time Walk. That might buy me some uh, <laughs> time. Hmm. I'm really worried. The moment, the moment my opponent hits like a Saga or a, like a Golos or something, it's really bad for me. I guess I can't cast a Golos, but a Saga is like the end of the world here probably 
I have won a lot of mana crit flips too, which has been very helpful in this game. Oh, I wish I had a Hercules recall. Okay, so I think what we do is we start with time walk and then we how much mana do I have? Three? I probably just time walk and play mana bolts. And then I have just all of the mana. I think, like I said, the only thing I'm really looking for here is the ability to find my Monastery Mentor, which is probably the only, like, super strong play I have. I guess, technically, tinkering away my Mana Crypt for a Citadel is not the... Oh, I guess it doesn't work either, because there's a cage. What a very odd game. This is just no Hercules big issues. That actually is, like, not terrible on this board. So how much does it cost to do this? Four... So I can just get an Ancestral. I just wish I had a Hercules. This game would be so easy. Um. Okay, this costs a, a Mana Vault activation now. It's kind of unfortunate. Let's just get a land drop going here. Um. Is it better to play Soul Ring? Not really. I can get a Citadel, I'm aware. All right, at least we have a dress down as an answer to a saga. The problem is we're still taking two damage a turn, and I'm losing damage to Mana Crypt, and they found a strip mine for my island, of course. Oh, they're going to hold it, though, so they can play a three drop. Is this going to be a Crucible? Or... They hit the Lodestone. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, it's like Mentor or Bust at this point. I don't know what to do. I mean, that's a really good top deck from them, for sure. Just not having Hercules is just so bad. I don't know why I did this to myself. This game was just super simple, super easy with the Hercules in my deck. All I had to do was Merchant for Hercules, and I would easily win. There's a Tinker. All right, I'm going to brainstorm and try to find the things that I need here. To fairy. Unfortunately, they just have so many things. Um, let's get rid of Yogwill and Mist up. This costs 6 mana. that worth it i mean i still have to pay two for every spell is that really good i don't really know if that's actually a good play and i lose my mana and i'm at 10 life so soul ring is minus one mana so i'm, I'm not sure if i want to play i really want to play soul ring like i can play soul ring but then i actually have to tap my i mean i have to tap my mana bolt anyways but it's good to get this mana in play now so maybe it's fine I don't know. I think I'm going to just run out of health before I find something that's relevant, especially with my opponent having double strip mine. At least they're, like, forced to attack the Teferi this turn. Oh. That could be good. Though I have so many cards in my hand, I don't know if it's actually going to be good. I think I'm just going to die this Mana Crypt before anything else happens, unfortunately. I might have to tinker with the Mana Crypt. I also have a Mana Vault I need to pay for. I'm just going to replay the thing. I also lose land. This is good, though. This is not bad. I get to keep two cards. They didn't kill the Teferi. I do need to tinker with something here, probably. I think I need to take the minus one mana to not take the life here. Let's see if I win this flip. I lost the flip. So how much mana do I have? Always balance in their uh, draw step. So I just don't have enough mana, though, right? This costs five. I can do it off of this. And this costs six. But it will cost one less. I guess I could tinker in their draw step, too. I guess I just lose a land. 
Well, what if they just wasteland me twice, though? If they wasteland my two lands, that's the same thing, right? I still just lose. I go on to one land. Uh, I think I'm going to play out this. Does that do anything? Well, I'm probably going to tinker with balance on this. Well, no, I don't have enough mana to tinker. Well, if I fetch, I have enough mana to tinker with balance on the stack. One, two, three, four, five. If I tinker, if I do that, I can tinker with balance on the stack. I, it doesn't matter. I just need to get rid of my mana crypt. It doesn't, doesn't, whatever I tinker for does is irrelevant. It's either a citadel or a top or something. I don't know. I just need to get rid of my mana crypt. I can't die. I don't want to die into my mana crypt here. It feels like it's pretty likely. I have one land left in my deck to fetch four, but that also puts me to four. And I lose my land. I mean, we can, but we, again, we're going to need to... We're going to go to two cards. I guess we could keep Tinker dressed... Uh, Tinker land. Oh. <sighs> I feel like it's better to t to balance in their draw step. I'm gonna go in their draw step. Set a stop here. I still think I'm gonna tinker. Well, I don't have to tinker. I guess I can just wait. I'm gonna use all my lands to do this. I guess I just keep Tundra double basic. And then I keep Tinker Lavinia dress down. Those other cards weren't that good, anyways. I still have a Teferi in play. So I can actually tick that up as well. They have three cards in hand. I can stop some things that are bad from happening with a dress down if needed. Uh, I can also tinker still my mana crypt away. Why isn't Teferi back on two? What do you mean? So if this is a Golos... We're just going to dress this Golos down. Where's my dress down? Oh, it's over here. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. I really would like to win this Mana Crypt flip. I lost the Mana Crypt flip. So I can chump this Skolos for a turn with Lavinia. And then... I'm actually not going to have enough to tinker. <laughs> Wait, what if I tinker for a mana first? What do I have left? I just have normal mana rocks. So if I tinker off of this... Off of, sorry, of this... Okay, I can tinker first into a mana rock. Uh, I'll just get a sapphire. And then... Vinia chumps, and then I can... I don't know, bouncing the Golos is not exactly ideal. I think I'm just going to lose this game because I didn't put a Hercules in my deck. I can't really afford to play slower, Chad. I have 11 minutes on my clock. <laughs> 
it's pretty doomed. I, like like I said, this game was 100% an, uh, an easy win if I just had a Hercules in my deck, but I keep disrespecting shops and not putting a Hercules in my deck, and I'm losing games because of it. It's, I don't know. It's my fault. It's just bad deck building. What's the guy going to do? All right, so I'm getting strip mined here. I don't have to untap this this turn, but I'm going to. I can, at the very least, if I draw a blue card, force. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Two, three, four. I need to draw a blue card. What if I just vamp for the mentor now? It's just tossed too much mana. I also can't vamp because I'm at two. Uh, this actually lets me fetch and hard cast, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. As long as I correctly and out correctly figured out that I have enough mana to do this. Like, I, if I just have a Hercules in my deck, it's the the game has been won like thirty minutes ago. <laughs> uh, I actually considered cutting a Teferi for a Hercules for what it's worth. All right, I hope I have a land left in my deck here. If I don't, I lose the game anyways, so it's fine. Yeah, one land left. Okay. So, untap this. Draw. Mystical. Pass. See what they top deck. I mean, it's been a really good game of Magic, what they top deck. Four mana, so two, so the two mana spell. Is it a revoker? Oh, it's a transfer. Sure, I don't think that matters at all. Mystical for. I still can't yog. Well, I can DT though. It's DT. DT. Mentor. Play Mentor. Can I play Mentor without using my Mana Vault? Right? No, I can't. Okay, it's fine. I'll just untap it. I should have played this Opal. Oh well. I'm trying to... Well, I can't play the Opal because of 3-ball. You're right. True. Yeah. Oh, then I can't recast anything. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I guess we're not playing PO. Oh, I guess I can just PO for some... some just the Mana Vault or something. Probably fine. Oh, uh, maybe I should put the Narset back as well. That's fine. I can't play anything again this turn anyways, so. I wish I could force. Oh, Ghost Quarter. Oh, that's a strip mine. How many cards are in my deck? 16 cards. I don't think that matters here. Should just be winning. Did I play this game okay? I feel like I played the game okay. I think my deck was just not configured in a way that made this game easy to win. So I do lose this game to a top deck Null Rod if I play this way. But it's probably fine, right? I probably should not have tapped my Mana Vault. If I if it has a top deck Null Rod, I do lose. Or no, I don't. Yeah, I do lose. I don't have any, any mana to pay for it. Okay, I, should not, I shouldn't have tapped this Mana Vault. That was a mistake. Was there an ability for me to hold up force that turn? I still feel like I was supposed to put the pressure on. I don't know. I don't think I played like a, the last few turns of this game super well, but it's fine.
if I just cast force, I had if I uh, no, I, I can't I can't pitch cast force, so. We're playing the does Justin pass through his mana vault by accident game. I'd have to have seven mana to force. Well, I won this game with 14 cards in my library and didn't really do any POing. It's kind of fun. And this is why I strongly dislike Golo Shops, because it doesn't apply any kind of clock. Though my opponent drew zero Urza Saga. If my opponent drew a single Urza Saga in that game, I probably could not have won, so... Alright, uh, I don't think I want Karn, Needle, I want Planes. I want Sphinx, I want Opposition Agent, I want Force, I want Hercules. I want Ending, I want Fragmentize, and I want Swords. So just a small 10-card sideboard. Right, I didn't. I, I opted not to play Hercules in my main. Uh, how do I do this sideboarding? Let's see. At the very least, top... Uh, these are coming out. This is coming out. Misstep is coming out. Probe is coming out. Ponder is coming out. Snapcaster is coming out. Uh, Narset is coming out, Yogwill is coming out, and actually it's kind of a bad balance. Uh, it's nice to have balance, though. Maybe one Lavinia on the draw. Yeah, that looks fine. No, um, well, it might the heuristics might have changed to be honest, but historically, the one of the ways you win is you just Hercules them and untap in Citadel. So that might not be the case in this build, but I, I think it's good to have both Citadel and Sphinx in your deck. If your deck didn't have Hercules Recall, then I would say you wouldn't want Citadel. Like, um. I typically don't like Citadel against Mono White on the play. But. Oh, this hand doesn't function. I have eight minutes on my clock, though, so I need to play a wee bit faster. It's too bad. This hand has a lot of the cards I really like in the matchup. Mulligan. Yep. Keep. I don't know. I think chess would fine. Oh, no rod. Classic does Justin draw a land. <laughs> this hand isn't great. This hand needed a force of will to be great. Oh, I think we're losing this game. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm going to play this man. Eh, I don't think I'm playing the aggro out. This is basically the one of the stronger hands you can have as the goalless player, so I'm not super worried. This is just what they have as their best hand, so. Uh, maybe I'm supposed to hold that. I don't know. It's fine. I'm probably supposed to play the mana crypto. out. Eh, maybe not. I don't think it's going to take much of my clock to play this game out, so. Oh, wow. Double Ghost Quarter. That's nuts. I'm on two islands and a plains, so.
That's a great draw. <sighs> Wish I had a force. Like I could force this play. I think I'd be in actually a pretty good spot. Yeah, not having a force here is basically the end of the game, unfortunately. If I ha if I had a force, I actually think we're fine. I can just counter this. But uh, Karn has got to be the single. <laughs> this is like this is up there. It's one of the best uh, goal of straws you can really have here. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. Like, I kept my six-card hand. Like, there was things I lost, lost to. Turn one, no rod was one of them. Yeah, Lattice. No, I mean, they definitely can win. It's not like you always have functional hands. I lost a bunch of games to Golos recently. All right. Um, So I'm going to bring the Lavinia back in on the play. And I'm going to bring in... And I'm going to take out. Uh, I don't know. There's actually nothing I really want to take out. It's like fine, but their deck is a null rod deck. It's not like great or anything. I typically don't like Karn very much in the matchup. Yeah, they're really good. My opponent's playing Revoker, Golos, and Sagas. I think the dress downs are quite strong. I think we can take the balance out on the play, though. Obviously, balance is better on the play, but the reason I want it is just like as a catch-all answer at the end. So, like, I don't think I'm going to like play all my things and balance them. I don't think that's really what we want a good... Yeah, my opponent's not going to... Oh, maybe I should have seen it if my opponent would jam... Um, maybe I should have just seen if my opponent would jam first. Like, all they have to do is play a creature first. Like, they don't have to jam the Lattice. And I have to play out that game with my clock. So, I'm not actually convinced I would win that game if I, like, had to play the time anyways. So. I don't think this balance is bad either. Like, I have plenty of good cards in the matchup, is what I'm trying to say. What if I just take this Brainstorm out? <laughs> Like, if my opponent did lock themselves out with Lattice, which I wasn't thinking about, to be fair, I don't know if I'm allowed to play that out all the way. Like, I, I'm not sure. I've never actually had to play one of those out. Like, where I'm discard we're both discarding every turn. We remove all stops. Like, I don't know. I don't know. This could be overboarding, to be fair. I mean, my best hands are all like Mox, 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 per, opal, opal, uh, per, uh, Paradoxical, but it doesn't really change. It just has no mana. <laughs> I didn't cut any mana. I added mana to my deck. Good lord. It's one of these hands. It's where I keep it with, on the back of Ancestral and lose. Uh, oh. I assume my opponent had less cards in their library, right? Or did I, did I have more? I, neither person drew cards, right? So I would lose, wouldn't I? My opponent was on the play in that game. Could be wrong. I mean, I think I have to keep this hand. Oh, I went to six. <laughs> That's funny. I think I have to keep this hand, but this hand has a really high potency of, of losing the game if my ancestral is bad, unfortunately. There's just, like, not much... Like, I don't think I'm going to go to five. That's a good draw. Those were definitely good draws. A land and two mox in is fine. If we can just like untap in and slam a mox off the top, that's not an opal. I think that's a good place to be. Uh. Let's see what they do. They kept a seven card hand, so. These are definitely the kind of, of hands where I have to keep, I think, and I can lose because of it. I don't know. 
Drive safe. I'll see you. Oh, Lotus is bad for me. <laughs> okay. Well, my opponent may have just magicked me, unfortunately. I don't know, man. Shops is so good. I don't know why people say Shops is bad. Oh, that's a Shadow Sphere. That's not very good. <laughs> sure. Well, I have the lands to beat Shadow Sphere for what, or to beat Trinosphere for what it's worth, but. No, this is much worse than... No oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> okay. I mean, I just need to draw a Mox in, honestly, and then we can start POing. Do we start POing now? Yeah, survey... S oh, I can't PO now. I have to do end step, right? One, two, three, four. Yes, I do end step. All right, well, let's see. If they have a Null Rod... That's not even the end of the world, but it's more annoying. That is fine. Doesn't do anything. All right. This looks winning to me. So off we go. I think we drew extremely well in this game for what it's worth we drew lands and moxen which is basically the only good cards in our deck <laughs> mm. i do have to play this fast though but it should be fine oh they have mind break trap i think my opponent might have mind break trap I don't think I'm playing around Mind Break Trap, though. I mean, I can. I'm not playing around Mind Break Trap. Who am I kidding? Okay. All right, so we're, we're done with doing things, but we have two removal spells, so... The first PO was not Mind Break Trappable, if I recall correctly. Was it? I don't think that was true. Uh, uh, I mean, we might be able to cast it at L if they don't wasteland us. It all depends on what they do. Wow, double workshop in this draw was pretty nice. Yeah, but when do I ever play around it? So we can't actually go for Citadel, unfortunately, because they left open the Wasteland. I mean, we could still go for it, go for it, but... I think I just go to my turn and blow this shit up. Oh, I guess I could have just done it on my turn. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. I'm just playing bad. It's fine. 
I'll just hold it and do it next turn, I guess. I guess I could have Hercules end step and then just played it. I don't know why I didn't do that. I don't know. Well, I guess they have... Oh, they're going to Crucible? Did I ruin it for myself here? <laughs> Might have ruined it for myself here. They're making some interesting plays, I must admit. Sure. That's so odd to do. Oh, I don't have dress down up. It's unfortunate. That was a really weird play for them to make. I'm not going to lie to you. I like how I played a lot of that. There was still some really sus parts of it, unfortunately. Like, I could have Hercules myself to get an extra black mana to play Citadel. I could have just played my Citadel because <laughs> I can just fetch on my turn. I don't know why I thought I had to fetch on their turn. I was just under some weird, some weird assumption I had to fetch on their turn for some reason. But for the most part, that was a pretty good match. I definitely made it hard for myself by not having a Hercules in the main. That match would have been a very easy, uh, very easy match with a Hercules in the main, unfortunately. All right, here we go. Round two, Vintage Showcase. We have a nice hand here. We're up against Kevin, who is the, probably the premier goal of Shops player now that um, you don't see much Lariwa in Vintage. So we might have back-to-back -back goal of Shops after I cut the Hercules from my main, which would be... Just about how the doctor ordered it. The good news is I can force their first play, and if I hit a mox, then I can play PO. So, oh, that's a Gitaxian probe, so maybe not. Though, it could still be. Uh, nope, that's an underground C. Kevin did let me know that they are also playing the Mana Traders right now. So, is it Duress? I hope not. Uh, okay. Guess we're getting Doomsday today. Alright. This hand is not amazing against Doomsday. There are definitely better things that could be happening. I mean, discard's insane. If you're not going to combo this turn, it takes away one of my best cards. <laughs> discard's super good. I don't know what to tell you, Log. Reevaluate yourself. Look how good that was. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs> uh... I don't really know how to play this. I guess I can just go... I don't know why I played an emerald on that jet. 
I don't want to show them the island, but I also want to brainstorm off the, the freaking island. So I don't know what the play is. But, like, I can't just, like, represent nothing here. I mean, does Doomsday care about creatures? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I mean, if they just go turn one to rest, turn two, kill me with with force of will back up. Like, what is, what's a guy to do? I think I'm going to hold this fetch land if possible and brainstorm on my turn or something. I'm not really sure. Well, I kind of should have played Jet and put the Emerald back in my hand. It's better to keep these in my hand for brainstorm, right? But I wanted to put one in play because of Daze. But I should have put the Jet in play. Uh... Alright, I'm casting this Brainstorm. I need to find Fluster. Oh my god, they have Mental Misstep chat. <sighs> this game is so doomed. Okay. I don't know. It's it's doomsday. What was what was I ever gonna do really? Oh, cool. We're dead. Awesome. I'm glad we played magic. What a fun time. <laughs> we are never making it to that point in our lives, log. They're killing us this turn with 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 counter backup. And we don't even have a counter spell to anyways. <laughs> They have perfect information besides one card. They got to take the Force of Will out of my hand with Duress. Notably very good. And now they're going to murder me. Oh, they don't have it. That's always fun. Wish we had a mental misstep. That'd be nice. All right. That just means that they're more likely to counter all of our stuff. I think I'm going to play this Ambush Viper end of turn, to be honest with you. Oh, no, we are still dead. That's exciting. <laughs> I don't know. This is, I mean, this is the best deck in, in Vintage by a pretty decent margin, I would say. It's kind of expected. I have been saying this for a very long time, and people either listen to me or they don't listen to me. <laughs> but I mean we we lived to turn three that's just because our opponent chose not to kill us right <laughs> they've gone through like 10 cards and we've cast nothing we or right, we have resolved no non moxon spells here I think there's a chance my opponent doesn't have a cantrip in their hand, but if they don't have a cantrip in their hand, it means they have a, a counter spell in their hand. So I'm not really sure, like, what our game plan is, even if they don't kill us on this turn. They either have a cantrip and they kill us, which they do, or they had a non-cantrip and, and then we can't kill them anyways, so... I don't know. I'm pretty sick of this deck, though. I'll tell you that much. That is just complete nonsense, Raphael. Don't pirate that nonsense to me. There is absolutely no chance we were supposed to brainstorm. The best way to nerf Doomsday? Restrict it. <laughs> All right, so Island comes out, uh, Balance comes out. I mean, my deck is extremely, extremely geared to beat Doomsday, for what it's worth. Like, my deck has double Lavinia, double Teferi, double main deck dress down. Like, uh, it's really hard to build a deck that is better against Doomsday, <laughs> besides playing four Flusterstorms main, which is suicide in this current metagame, so... Mm, Karn just probably doesn't cut it. Like, all my cards are just super good against Doomsday. 
But the problem is Doomsday's velocity is far too high. I don't really know what I want as my last cut here. Maybe I just trim an opal. Like, I'm not sure this hand is actually good. If I had a Moxin in this hand, I would probably keep it. But... Like, playing Sol Ring Go and then playing a Lavinia with no counter spells and nothing is just not acceptable. Like, this hand looks like it would be good against Doomsday, but because of, because of the velocity of Doomsday, I think it's just not going to be good enough. Like, if I had a Moxin, then I could play Sol Ring Moxin, go, hold open dress down, untap, play Lavinia. Even then, that's still, like, a little sus. It's just too slow. This is a good one. Has two pieces of counter magic and an opposition agent, so... I mean, if it was a Pearl Sapphire, the hand would be fantastic. I would just play turn one Lavinia. <laughs> <laughs> Just ha make them have to have force of will. Or they lose pretty much. I don't lose pretty much, but it's very hard for them to win through a turn one Lavinia. It stamps out all of their, like, uh, broken things, basically. They have to wait until turn, like, four, three or four to even, like, do anything productive. If you resolve turn one Lavinia. But yeah, Duress was just so good in game one. Really, really strong play. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is just opal to the bottom. This opal is never getting turned on. This is just basically pray to draw a non-opal Moxin on the second turn of the game so that I can play... Or even, like, a Mana Crypt is obviously insane. Uh, if I play, can get a Mana Crypt, then I can just play it with Flusterstorm backup, and it's probably going to be good enough to win. I guess my opponent could theoretically have boarded into Shieldreds. I have some, sh some Dress Downs and some Teferis, so I'm not really worried about that either. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to lead with uh, fetch an underground C so I don't get beat by an opposing opposition agent. But, yeah, I'm going to bottom this opal and pass. So opponent is still, looks like they're still playing their manager's match. I'm just going to uh, stop the VOD. All right, let's try this. Keep. Bottom this opal. They kept a seven card hand. And I'm just going to fetch to play around um, their opposition agents. Don't think it like the fitting matters too much. I have so many mana sources in my deck anyways. And I would rather just get this going in play now. Also... It'll think I'm, they'll think I'm going to Ancestral on their upkeep, which is good mental value. Booble. Ah, bubbles are interesting. I don't know if I really like them in Doomsday. Can we stop looking at my hand? I mean, I can't really afford to mental misstep this, unfortunately. Ah, I kind of have to. I don't... Re <laughs> I really can't let them know what my plan is here. It's really unfortunate. It's not a good use of... Uh, typically, the person who is on the probe side of this exchange is coming out ahead. They actually went for themselves here because they have a fetch land to see if they want their top card. Unfortunately, the one thing I can't do, unless I hit a mana source, is like uh, Merchant Scroll next turn, probably. 
If I hit Amoxin though, I probably will just Merchant Scroll. Negation. I still think I'm not supposed to let my Fluster Storm go down. Just like too much risk in, in going for like this here. My opponent's deck plays days, forces, too much stuff. This is a very high value fluster. I don't typically like letting these brainstorms resolve. Yeah, I mean, Doomsday is the best <laughs> combo deck, the best control deck. <laughs> it's very well put together. It's a well-oiled machine. Bottom, bottom on that preordain. It's a decent sign. I would love a land here. Non opal moxin is fine as well. Force. All right. Well, I think I am just going to use my merchant scroll for ancestral. Unfortunately. All right, there's like a pretty high chance I lose the game on this turn, but that's just kind of what Doomsday does. My opponent can very easily have um, Dark Ritual, Doomsday with backup. Right. I mean, I, I may, I'm making the plays that I have to make. I guess you could theoretically say I didn't have to mental miss up probe or I didn't have to force the brainstorm or fluster the brainstorm, but... I like those plays, so. Nah, I mean, we're just getting buried right here by my opponent's superior card advantage engines. Considering our way of winning the game is opposition agent Rama, then we, we just can't let Doomsday, the first Doomsday resolve, no. I suspect we're like 5% to win this game. I, I like if you don't have a perfect like super powerful hand against Doomsday, you just get buried and lose. My opponent's deck like, like I said it's the best like control deck in the format. It has the most counter spells, the most draw spells, and it also is a combo deck that wins on turn 1 and turn 2. Looks like they have dig through time as well. Sure. Goodbye, Ancestral. You lived a good life. That probably means we're not dying this turn, but... Is it hard to pilot? I'm not convinced. I think that's just a big doomsday talking point. It's a nice to rest for sure. A deck can have a high floor and a high ceiling. <laughs> it just means it's broken. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I am going to try to get a land and slam this opposition agent. So, 
Any any manners? Any manners? Any manners? <laughs> yeah. No, my opponent knows I have it in my hand because of duress, so there's there's no reason to try to get greedy with it. I want to just resolve it when they're tapped out of Flusterstorm. It's all I can do. Like obviously they can duress or they can daze me, they can have force and then have force negation back up. Like I I'm just I'm uh what? I'm 13 cards behind my opponent in this game. My opponent has seen 13 more cards than me <laughs> in three turns. <laughs> like, it's doomed. Traditionally, the opponent's style of deck was held back by workshop decks. But with workshop decks falling out of favor due to the other you know, environment variables... Uh, not environment variables really, but just the other variables in the format, the other decks that are performing well, the cards like, there's been a lot of cards in the last 10 years or five years that have made workshops worse. And because the rest of the format is good against workshops, there's less workshops and thus this doomsday deck gets to run free and do everything it wants. Like, Doomsday is actually uh, unfavored versus aggro shops, even with the Thorn restriction. But aggro shops, like, is, that's a really hard time for aggro shops to exist in the current environment because of, like, vigor. Uh, powerful combo tinker. <laughs> so. Basically... Doomsday just gets free run of the of the field. Obviously, it's bad against Squee, which is something, but it's not enough. Sorry, it's bad against Countervine. <laughs> yeah. What, while we wait for our opponent to come back from their modern match, uh, we can we can talk about that. Uh, I'm trying another deck name reclassification, and I'm going to name every one of these decks. We're going to call them Countervine decks, which is decks that play... What the... What? No one saw this, right? <laughs> what? It says Aggrovine, Aggrovine at the bottom of this stupid thing. Oh, my God. The decks formerly known as Squee and a Hollow Vine uh, are called Countervine. <laughs> Aggrovine. <laughs> <laughs> and all the decks under the mana producing umbrella we're going to call them aggro vine so that's like cradle vine hogak um all of those kind of decks good lord i had no idea that was there hey look an island i'm slamming this my this thing because i can't beat flusterstorm so uh i have to try to play into like days negation which is less likely than flusterstorm so I also think they could probably unrestrict Thorn now, but um, I also don't really want them to, so. <laughs> uh, Agravine is, like, a pretty good choice because of the amount of, um, like, the way the mana game is currently set up, so. Yeah, Lowstone Golem is a bit too good. Having a clock be your lock piece is a little, uh, a little nuts, and people don't really play Lightning Bolt anymore. <laughs> So, I mean, I, this is a forced play from me because obviously my opponent can have Daze and my opponent can have Force of Negation, uh, but if I play on their turn, they can have um, Flusterstorm. And I, I don't want to fight over that, so. I do think Aggravine's the best oof deck. That's a true statement.
So if my opponent has a combination of force blue card plus days or force blue card plus uh, f force of negation blue card, um, then this opposition agent won't resolve. They could also theoretically just have uh, fetch fatal push. Uh, I don't know if they boarded that in. No, I, I don't think there's any reason to keep Hex Drinker separate from Hogak. I, they are the exact same deck to me. Obviously, one again, one of them mulligans harder to bizarre, but they have all of the same matchups that are good. Um, it's basically the same deck. It's just a different way to build it. It's very, very important, I think, to keep Countervine and Aggrovine separate because they have extremely different matchups. They are basically good against the polar opposites of the format. With the very, very distinct decks. Whereas I think like Hogak and, and Cradle Vine are just the same deck. <laughs> that like slight change. Oh, maybe my opponent will time out because of the mana traders. We can hope for that, right? <laughs> uh, sorry, YouTube watchers. Maybe you will just enjoy my chat banter and everything will be fine. You can't call it Squee, because I actually think that, you know, there should be some amount of Squeeze in the 75 of the aggro vine decks, and there have been in the past. It's a little weird, because the current versions of, like, Cradle Vine are trying extremely hard to not have anything in the graveyard. So that's the reason you don't see any Squee. But there's, like, definitely a lot of world where there's a metagame where you want to have Squeeze in your, in your Cradle Vine deck. Oh, Bizarre is easily the most powerful land in Magic. It's not really close. Ooh, the Opposition Agent straight up resolved. Maybe that means we're just going to get... I don't know, dismembered or something? Bizarre is the most powerful land in Magic. It's not really close at all. Yeah, I guess we can get Oracle killed too. Is it Shieldred? Oh, they have an oracle in their hand. So they're going to exile the deck. Can't I just take two forces, though? So then I have double force back up and days. Uh, maybe my opponent's just not paying attention. So they have oracle, force, force. So if I just take... Is there no days? Pretty sure I can just take, what about Mind Break Trap? Force, Force, Mind Break Trap. Gush. <laughs> force, Force, Mind Break Trap, Gush? Trying to figure out what else I can take. What do I? Is this mental misstep do anything? They have played a land already. <laughs> uh, yeah, they already played a land. I think I just take a third force. I mean, they have to win this turn, so there's no point in taking ancestral. All right, force, 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 spine break, trap, gush, done. All right, I will cast Force and Pitch Dress Down. <laughs> this is why you don't play two games of Magic at the same time, chat. 
<laughs> uh, I will take it. I mean, it was going to be kind of hard. I think they should have just forced my... I guess they would have lost that. Wait, what was their hand? Could they, could they not have just forced my opposition agent twice? Yeah, they're playing the mana traders right now. I think they could have just forced my opposition agent twice, right? Force of will and force of negation. Untap doomsday. Fluster, negation, force, oracle, ritual, doomsday, fetch. Oh, they didn't. Have, they had two. Yeah. So why don't they just? I mean, I don't know. They had two forces. They had negation and will, right? Or did they not? Yeah, yeah, they did. So yeah, I mean, all they had to. Well, I don't know if they had the second force in their hand on my turn. They don't need an oracle. They have a doomsday. If they didn't have the second force in their hand or, like, were missing a blue card in their hand and that's what they drew for turn, then it makes sense. Everything makes sense at that point. They could have drawn force of will or force of negation because they knew I had a counterspell. So, yes, there was a second oracle in that pile. Okay, I'm just, like, talking because I know they're going to be using the whole time anyways. So I'm just think just talking through that because it's interesting. It all depends on what they drew for turn. But if I was them and they did have double force up, then I would have just double forced my uh, Oracle or my my opposition agent on tap and Doomsday. Even if you can't win on the same turn, I have no cards in hand. Well, they can only fight over agent if they have exactly force blue card, force blue card, because they know I have force in hand. But we don't know if they had that. We know they could have had that. But like I said, we don't know. All right, well, we get to play a game three, which is, oh, I'm so happy because I felt like that game was very close to unwinnable. But again, this is why I have opposition agent on my board. Some people inside of the Discord were asking why I'm playing opposition agent. That is exactly why I'm playing opposition agent. It's so good against Doomsday. And it's also pretty good against like a bunch of Tinker decks, so. I don't typically board it in against Jeskai, for what it's worth. Yeah, I don't think the metagame currently calls for two. So. Well, that hand sucks. This is like, uh, this is happening to me a lot in every deck I play recently, where I just have like an unkeepable seven, I mold a six, and it has no mana sources. <laughs> like, this hand would be okay if I had a basic island. I would have, you know, I would have some recourse here. Ah, uh, Talarian Academy, doing me dirty. My opponent kept another seven card hand, and I have to go to five. I mean, I, I can't keep this hand. It's really unfortunate. If I had a probe, I would probably keep this hand. I'm only like 12, 11, uh, 4, I guess all of these count. So, but it's only 9. So it's like I have, I'm 20 out of 53 or something. It's just not good enough. Okay, five. Yep. I mean, these cards are good. So there's that. Um, I just get rid of the three cost card. I don't know if this is enough, but we're certainly going to give it the college try. I 
I mean, these are all three cards are good against Doomsday. The problem is my Doomsday opponent is on the play with a seven card hand. <laughs> Yeah, it's doomed. A uh, seven card ancestral hand. <laughs> Not much we can do. It's a good draw. I wonder if I just slam. I don't have to. I can hold up fluster, dress down, and on the next turn I can slam. What's the percentage chance one fluster gets me to the next turn? I didn't see them keep in days in game one, but maybe they bring days in on the play. I don't know. It's it's not only is it fluster, but it is fluster with a mana open. So I, I actually think it should hold. But I guess I'm not like, uh, I don't get to hold open fluster next turn if I use my fluster this turn. I think this can hold some amount of the time, so... I'll try. I mean, that was a good draw. Definitely a good draw. I think the draw I want for my next turn is a force. I mean, they could they could just time out, I guess. I'm just going to get duress. I guess duress is fine, too, because I have two spells that stop me from losing the game on this turn. Pass. Okay. I mean, they're going to discard the hand size, and I have Lavinia. Okay. I mean, not bad. Nars, that's a decent follow up, too. Um, I guess a Sapphire is more vulnerable. All right. How do you respond to Lavinia? Azorius Renegade. Sure. Wait, they force without drawing the card off of Vamp? Does that mean they put like another force underneath or something? Or are they just street wraithing? How much life was that? I thought that was one life, wasn't it? Two, three, four. Wow, they have force without. All right, well, I just let this happen then. I guess if they have like Dark Ritual, Doomsday, Fluster, I die anyways. Why would you vamp first? Oh. Well, isn't this vamp just for, like, days or force? No, no, I think flustering is bad. I think we want to hold fluster. My, my thing, my... My fluster doesn't be a fluster on their turn anymore. If they have fluster backup, but it depends on what they vamped for. My fluster also loses on my turn. This lets us play our Narset maybe. I think it's bad for us no matter what is my current outlook on life here. Okay. Well, let's see what happens. Maybe they just like doing for a shieldred. <laughs> ah, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Fuck you. <laughs> Uh, it's too free, man. Doomsday is completely unbeatable. <laughs> I 
Maybe I should have just passed with flustered dress down up. Should I have just like passed with flustered dress down up? I don't it's I just need to not mulligan to five and have my opponent keep a seven card ancestral hand, right? <laughs> it's doomed, man. It's so doomed. All right, here we are, round three. Um we got Dan across the table. Um Dan just five owed recently with one of my Atroxa builds. So I assume that we're likely to play against um, a show and tell Atroxa deck uh, that I created. I, I, this was one of the decks I was interested in playing today for the showcase, but I just don't have the super confidence level that I wanted for the decks for a showcase. Like I think both, uh, all three of the different Oath Atroxa decks seemed fairly, fairly good, but I just don't know. Mm, if this hand hits a second mana source, I think it's actually quite reasonable. So I'm going to keep this hand, fetch a basic, and uh, cast Ponder, and try to find a second mana source so I can play a 3-drop walker on turn 2. If that is a land, do we want to keep it still? I guess it's fine. I'm a little worried, but if my opponent is on this version of Atrox, that doesn't mean, that means they don't play um, Pyroblast, which is really helpful for this hand. This hand is really weak against Pyroblast deck. Like, I think I can just play a Teferi this turn and plus it, and I actually think that puts me in a pretty good spot. If they have Force Fluster, it's a little annoying, but... Oh, they're going to Ancestral on my upkeep? No. All right. Well, I'm going to try to resolve this to fairy. This is ancestral. I'm just going to let that go. I think it's fine. I did find force. And like, I don't think this Atrox uh, Teferi is an under th any threat unless my opponent listened to me and added an Assassin's Trophy to the deck. So we can kind of use this as a stopgap for um, Oath. And then hopefully we'll just resolve Narsa next turn and we'll start finding good cards because we are going to have to draw a Vampiric, unfortunately. And this is an, uh, oh. <laughs> That's like not great for me. And why do I build such good decks? <laughs> no, they had Time Walk. Oh, they didn't hit a Moxon, though. That's kind of lucky. If they had hit a Moxon and Time Walk, we would just lose the game on the spot. I think we got extremely lucky here. Oof. I mean, I guess they can still preordain into Lotus, but... They could take another Show and Tell for after this Teferi, which is pretty bad as well. This is really bad. I think we're just losing because show and tell plan. It's pretty rough. Bounce, bounce. What are we? What are you talking about? Well, I tried looking at building a breach Atroxa deck, but the mana base is extremely bad. 
We'll probably do it at some point, though. Uh, my opponent chose Brainstorm, Time Walk, Underground Sea. Not Forbidden Orchard. That's interesting. Brainstorm, Time Walk. They didn't take the Atraxa? That's kind of odd as well. Why wouldn't they take second Atraxa? I think they should have taken... <laughs> I think they should have taken Time Walk, Forbidden Orchard... Uh, brainstorm Atraxa. <laughs> I mean, they know I have a balance in my hand. I'm not going to. I, I'm not going to bounce it. I, I'm probably going to bounce it now, though, because I kind of want to cast Narset this turn, but. I could just I could just balance and kills the Atraxa and takes five cards out of their hand, so that's probably just better. They still get the time walk, but I wish I could cast this vampiric tutor. Uh, no, I'm definitely not bouncing Mox. No, no, no. Drawing land isn't very good here unless I draw exactly the land to cast Vamp, so. I guess if my opponent... I mean, they didn't keep a Traxa, so I don't, I don't really understand... I would love to be able to keep two Time Raveler activations. It is obviously like a little sus with my opponent already having Time Walk, but... They can only keep two cards here, so they can't really keep like Time Walk, Show and Tell, Atraxa. So they got rid of Time Walk and Underground Sea, so I don't know anything about their hand anymore. So they did have a Show and Tell already in their hand. Alright. Demonic, sure. I don't know, that balance was super strong though, so. Oath, sure. Oh, with Orchard. Okay, so they already had an Orchard in their hand, is why they kept that. So, this is why we kept Artifairy and didn't bounce. Now I have two bounces of Oath. Just looking for a force on the way down. This is this is why you didn't Teferi last turn, for everyone in chat who's trying to figure out why. Um, I do need to... Fine. I guess I could just vamp for force. Uh, but I kind of just want Narset. So... Hmm. All your bounce lines were bad, trust me. <laughs> I guess we should just play Narset and go for Tinker, right? Because I have a second bounce anyways. We're just going to go for Tinker and win. All right, so I have uh, a Teferi in play. They All they have is an Oath. I have a Vamp for Tinker, and I have Tinker with Top Out. I'm pretty surprised we actually won this game. I think we were basically one Moxen away from losing this game. If my opponent had find a Max, Moxen off their first show, show and tell there, we would have lost. So a little dicey. Uh, I would not consider us a control deck, but... Alright. Not bad. It's a pretty clean game. Teferi really pulled its weight in that game, I have to admit.
Teferi was the single best thing that happened in that game. I got to give credit where credit's due. How do I want to play against this deck? Prismatic ending looks decent. Flusterstorm is extremely important. Negation is important. Balance, true. But I think Balance did the most work because of Teferi. And it was uncounterable. I, th I think Teferi was the enabler. All right, I don't think I want Lavinia's here. Well. Hmm. That is a question, I guess. Hmm. Do I want Lavinia's here? I don't think I want Fragmentize, but I do like Prismatic Ending. My opponent's deck is four Show and Tell, four Oath of Druids, and a bunch of Atraxas. I don't think I want Swords or Fragmentize. My opponent might be bringing in Vigors, Negations, and Claims. Uh, I think I do want Lavinia, actually. This is kind of tough. I think I want to take out Opals, because if they're bringing in Vigors and Claims, it just makes sense to not be relying on Opals here. I don't think this is an Opposition Agent matchup. It's just DT Vamp Scroll. It's not enough. I don't think Krakus is super good versus the Atroxa. It's like fine, but it's not great. I don't think Swords is the way we fight this. I think I'm going to do this. So I'm just going to bring in some more counter magic and take out my weak opal pieces and an island because I don't think they're not attacking my mana. Don't think we need Needle on like Oko or Bargain. It's probably just this. So my opponent's deck isn't playing Omniscience, so Krakus is like slightly better. I do think Lavinia does like some pretty decent things about keeping the deck in check after an Atraxa does something, but I guess I'm not winning if an Atraxa does resolve, so maybe it's bad. I mean, I have to fairies to bounce, so. <laughs> We're playing an eight round magic event and another seven card no mana hand. Uh, this is uh, it's a high high velocity hand here. How do I mulligan this? Just guess I put mental misstep away. I guess I could put land away. It's probably better. My deck does have a lot of mana in it for what it's worth. Opponent is on a mulligan to five currently. No, I think I like the opal here. It means I don't have to crack. I don't think I want to show them my hand. And they're also on a mull to five, so this probe could be important. I mean... I guess I paid the price on that one. Tinker. Buster's not bad. I mean, we don't have the nuts nuts. Like, I can't peel for three from this hand, so... They have Orchard Oath? All right, well, I guess mis mental misstepping cost me this game. The power of London, baby. All right, well, I need to draw something good. My opponent had <laughs> Probe Ancestral Orchard Oath is not good for me. Tinkers, Snapcaster Mage, <laughs> fuck. All right. It's doomed.
Ah, oh, shit. Oh, they hit Flash Atraxa here and Fluster. I guess they can't have Fluster Storm. So they can only take one Atraxa. They get an Oko. Flooded Strand. Oh, they didn't take Flash. They took Flusterstorm. Interesting. Why do they keep not taking Atraxas? So weird. I mean, we're just dead to this Oko, right? There's no point. You just... I mean, there's four Traxxas in the deck. It's better to hold it in your hand so you can show and tell. Oh, we actually have no outs now. Because I can't cast spells. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we just got bamboozled here. <laughs> they did bring in Nature's Claim. I have actual factual zero outs. All right. Um, I mean, the only thing I could have done differently really there was not hit the probe, but I felt like my opponent was low on action. I thought with one force, we would be in a good spot, but we missed. Obviously, we could have also hit action ourselves on our draw step, but we didn't. We missed, a, what, two draw steps? Yeah, that's fine. It is what it is. Maybe I do need to play Fragmentize. Really feels like I shouldn't have to play Fragmentize here, but... I just don't think, like, fighting... Like, I just don't think it's necessary. It just doesn't, doesn't feel like it's necessary. Like, I don't really... Like, Oath is not the only way they play Magic, and I don't think Fragmentize is, like, that good. It's mostly in my sideboard for Null Rod out of Mono White. I just don't really like it. These hands are just not very good. This hand's better. Yeah, I mean, I think my mulligan was fine last game. I just did not draw as many good cards. I mean, I drew good cards. I drew Lotus and Mana Crypt. I just didn't draw the right good cards, <laughs> I guess. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And. Well, PO is distinctly recorded in the data sheet uh, in regards to, you know, it's not, uh, Jewel is a separate place. It's not currently doing fantastic, but it was doing pretty well in the middle of the Mono White Initiative, like, metagame. The super heavy Mono White Initiative metagame, so. But the, re the past weeks have been really bad for PO because there's been a lot of Squee and Jeskai, which are both hard matchups, I would say. Not unwinnable matchups by any means, but they're hard matchups. PO is like a little bit power crept out of the format, I would say. Um, Tinker Citadel is obviously still super broken, but. Oh, you mean actually seeing a card PO? Well, if we don't have a lot of like mocks in, PO is not good anyways, so it's probably fine. Like, I think I would have would have killed for a PO last game, right? But even now, I, even then, like, I couldn't actually PO for three, so it wasn't that good. 
I mean, the best card in PO is not PO. It's it's Tinker. So. PO provides you with some hands that are oops, I win, which I think is important in Vintage. Um, but it's not really a consistent thing because it does require you to draw multiple mocks in. Uh, and uh, if you're not very lucky, <laughs> you might not have multiple mocks in. Yeah. PO has like some fundamental flaws in its deck design. Which I think are overcome by the power that it that it represents, but what the heck is this? this is going to be Teferi? Sure. Um, but you know, there are there are real flaws to playing uh, Paradox Lockham. I would like to draw a blue card so I can merchant scroll and not be sad. That does work, I think. Is there any way I can... So if I do a merchant scroll, it's two storm... Fluster is three storm. So pay four. I have enough. I'm going to get mental missed up, aren't I? Oh, whatever. Okay. They had to pitch an Atraxa, though, so hopefully we don't end up getting... Uh, I mean, I could have forced it, but I don't think it's good. Like, it's okay if they resolve Oath on this turn because we have an ending. It's it's bad if they have, like, second, show, second Atraxa show and tell, but I think that's okay. Dress down. All right. All right. Bottom top go. I'm gonna end stuff a dress down, look at for like a PO play. I think I'd rather cycle this than do nothing. Okay. PO? No PO. Well, maybe I should hold one of those in my hand. <laughs> uh I feel like we're in trouble. We have done the thing where you draw infinite mana and not a PO. We have four cards in hand. We have a double answer to Oath, and we've got single answer to Show. They have three cards in hand. Uh, I'm going to let Oath resolve and try to resolve an ending on it. White, red, ending. Okay, pass. All right, well, I think I'm in a good spot now. Seems reasonable. Is PO better than Tinker here? I think I just let this resolve and go for my win. Mm. 
No, it's probably fine to just force it and vamp on my upkeep, right? It's probably fine. I'm probably not going to force because of fluster. Or I'm probably not going to vamp because of fluster. They have double fluster, maybe? No. Okay. I mean, if they had a fluster there, they probably would have used it. So I think we can vamp end step. It's fine. So the question is, is Tinker better than P.O. here? It's bad if I hit Fluster on the top. What about Yogwill? Yogwill gets us land, dress down, ending merchant, merchant P.O. I think that's better. I'm just going to get Tinker. No, oh, that's a good one. I can just get a uh, tinker for a top. Mm. Maybe I don't need it. Uh... Okay. Okay. All right, chat. We're now in round four of this vintage showcase, four of eight. We have unfortunately paired into the Doomsday Master himself, Discover N. Let's see what we can do. Ooh, this is a good hand. This is a good hand. Oh, no, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. There's a chance. There's a chance. Does this play Lavinia Tinker on turn two or no? One, two, three, four. If we draw a Moxen on turn two, that's not an Opal. Uh, maybe we have a, a, a nice little, little avenue here. Uh, yeah, let's play a jet. All right, okay. It's not over. Everything's fine. Maybe they're not on Doomsday. That seems unlikely, seeing as they liked my Twitter post about Doomsday the other day. <laughs> they have like four liked Twitter posts ever. <laughs> mm. Everyone's just like, discover and give us the content. And discover and like, no, no content. Only winning. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Sure. Are we getting turn one? <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine, chat. Everything is fine. They're going to pass the turn. We're going to draw an 
not Opal Moxon and go Lavinia Tinker. It's fine. Everything's fine. There's no way Discover and Caps a turn one kill. That would never happen. I've been told Doomsday doesn't win the game until turn three or four. <laughs> Uh, we could have technically have tinkered on turn one i don't think that makes a lot of sense but we could have i mean you're, are you ever mulliganing this hand Raphael? it's so it's a pretty good hand All right, we got a turn, chat. We have a turn. God bless. I don't think I'm going to look through their pile because I don't think it matters too much. Um. Oh, they didn't put Black Lotus in their pile. I guess that matters. They probably have a Gush pile, I would assume. Okay, I'm looking for a non-Opal Moxon. <laughs> Uh, that's a bowl of Citadel. So. <laughs> uh... Yeah, we're just going to play Lavinia and hope it resolves. Nope, they had Force. So they had turn one Doomsday with Force back up. It was doomed from the start. Uh, I mean, we could have gone for turn one Tinker because the Opal didn't really matter, but it just felt way better for us to wait. I mean, I, I, like I said, I, I don't, I don't think my play, I don't think, I don't think I would change the way I played this game. My opponent is just discovering, so they have turn one Doomsday kill every time. <laughs> I don't understand keeping this. What do you mean? We have Lavinia. What are you talking about? The hand's totally a keep. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. The hand is absolutely a keep. There's no reason that we have to jam Tinker on turn one. It's like pretty risky for my opponent to cast turn one doomsday into open fluster storm as well. Like, I think that that outcome is pretty unlikely. Yeah, but we also have a chance of, like, Lavinia and Tinkering. Like, uh, like there's some argument to Tinker on turn one because we have an Opal that's not turned on, but in general, I think I would rather just go for our Lavinia. Like, uh, the percentage chance my opponent puts a turn one Doomsday there it seems very low, especially with the ability to hold up Fluster Mana, where, like, I, I mean, it's good good on them that they, they went for it, but I, I can't imagine that the average player goes for it there, unless they have a very specific hand full of, you know, certain things what was the other card i was boarding out in this matchup i can't remember <laughs> I, I mean like you can say that in hindsight chat i just think i almost am never going to ever tinker on turn one there so opal it was opal is what we took out I don't trust you, chat. I mean, I was surprised that they went for Dark Ritual Doomsday on turn one into into Fetchland, to be honest. I don't think there are... I, I really don't think it's worth contemplating. <laughs> I really don't think you're supposed to tinker there. You can say you're supposed to tinker there. I just don't... I think it's not even... 
Like, it's not even, like, enough to be on my radar to even consider. I don't think it's good. <sighs> I think this hand is bad, too. It just doesn't do anything. I'm going to mulligan this hand. This hand's much better. I did board out an island, right? <laughs> it's fine. Like, it's Twitch chat. People are going to say what they think. It's fine. I just don't think I would ever tinker there. And I don't think I'm going to mulligan the hand either. Like, it's a tinker hand with Lavinia against Doomsday. Like, I'm not mulliganing it. Can I vamp for here? No, drawing double PO there was not ideal. <laughs> uh, it was not ideal. PO players are on Bobble because Discover and decided Bobble was good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I could have chosen not to fetch, but I think it makes sense to fetch for a C here, so. No shot. Nope. Hole breacher is not even restricted. Unfortunately, they have hard cast force up right now. Still think I'm supposed to play it. No, I'm just vibing. I'm just vibing and dying to to Doomsday over and over again. I really like my deck against Doomsday, but it's unfortunate. Oh, hard cast mind break trap. Cool. I need to draw Moxon. Like, every turn of this game, for the rest of the game, I need to draw Moxon. <laughs> I don't even have a good Mystical, right? If I had an extra land, I could Mystical Yogg, and it's quite good. Uh, I just don't have the manas. You got it, homie. I mean, we're just dead. Like, opponent is just burying us. We didn't produce anything that was powerful, unfortunately. Our, basically, our Ancestral was so bad that we lost the game. 
Or Saga Saga is not very good, so there's no reason there's no real reason to restrict it. So you have to get like the fifth highest win rate deck to have a deck that has Saga. And it's not even a deck that uses Saga very well. It's jewel shops. <laughs> All the Saga decks are doing super badly. The error of Saga is over, basically. Like it exists, it's around, but it's just not that good. Like all cards, and pretty much all cards in Vintage, it, it, you know, people just need to take time and actually adjust their deck lists. You know, make Jeskai players actually play Wastelands in their deck, which they should have been doing anyways to beat Bizarre, but people are slow to adapt. Saga is just like not good enough to justify making your deck worse, typically. And then some decks play it, but those decks are not that, that good. Um... All right, we're gonna go for dress down. I'll buy us some turn at least. I wanted to do it in response to Street Wraith in case they're drawing into force. Wait, what? Interesting. Oh my God, they're so good. They're so good at this game, chat. Holy shit. Dude, this deck is so broken. <laughs> it's, it's just unbeatable. It's fine. Okay, here we go. Round five of the Vintage sh uh, Showcase now. We're up against Slasher. I kind of expect Slasher to be on some kind of blue combo deck. Uh, if I had to guess, maybe Jewel Shops. This hand is not particularly great against Jewel Shops, but it's not bad. It's a very high power hand. It's good against a lot of decks, so I think I'm just going to keep it. Interesting. I'm not exactly sure what that means. I did joke earlier about Slasher playing Doomsday, but it doesn't seem likely. No, it looks like Oath. Interesting. Huh. Don't actually have a force for this. Well, I guess I'm not going to have anything for anything. <laughs> That's bad. Mmm, things are bad. I think they should probably just turn off my Mana Vault. If I had to guess. It's free. Turns off a Mana. Sure, yeah. Pass, get rid of the floating mana. Then turn off the mana vault. I don't think it really does anything for them to get uh, a food token, so I would probably just try to prevent me from doing something while they're tapped out. Makes a lot of sense in my mind. We, of course, are in deep trouble. I need to make sure I fetch before I cast dress down or anything like that. Well, they can't make another one of my mocks and an elk, probably. They could stand up their own sapphire to block, but making a food token is pretty easy unless I hit time walk. So it looks like they're gonna play. They're playing uh, maybe an Atraxa Oath deck, which is pretty cool. 
All right. Um, I think I'm going to cycle my dress down at end step here. And maybe I should have cycled it at the end of main. Oh, well, I could stop and attract the trigger. I think that's worse than like trying to find action. Like a PO is pretty good here. Narsa is certainly interesting as well. Hmm. Unfortunately, if they have a force here, I can't really fluster back. They can actually pay for... I guess I can fluster back as it's going to give me an Orchard token. The Orchard token actually doesn't let me kill the Oko, though, right? If I had held my Mox Opal in my hand, I could have made a Fluster Storm count high enough to beat this. So maybe that was a misplay on my part. Hmm. Yeah, maybe that's just a misplay on my end then. Hmm. Or I did make mana with my academy. Did I need to make mana with my academy? I didn't need to. Time walk looks pretty good for them here. All right, so I just need to combo kill them basically at this point in the game. It's kind of all I have left. A PO is still a great draw, though, with a ton of uh, artifacts plus uh, elks in play. So there's definitely some upside here. Looks like they're probably playing my show and tell Atraxa version, but that's not 100% sure yet, seeing as they have played nothing that identifies them. Yeah, so that does. So my opponent didn't need to tap their green source there. I don't know if they meant to do that. I would probably have tapped my island. Unless I guess they go for Ancestral. I thought they would might go for Oath, but... I feel like it was a pretty easy read that I had Fluster. I guess they could also have Fluster, but I would beat that, so... I don't really like this play from them. I think if they just tap differently, they can Demonic for Oath here, and I think that's better. Hmm. They should just make a food. I'm probably never going to trade off my Mana Vault because it's still a PO target. Even though it's an Elk, it's not a token. I can bring it back to my hand. I mean, I think if I draw PO, I probably win. Maybe they're supposed to hit like my Soul Ring here to lower my mana count and turn off my Opal. Uh, if they do that, can they... They can't defend Oko if they do that, though, which is probably bad. It's probably better to just make a food here. I don't think they want to turn off their Sapphire... Stolen? I mean, it takes a long time to steal something. I just think that they made a crucial mistake here by demonicking for Ancestral instead of demonicking for Oath. Seems like a big misplay. Whereas, I, I think I made a small mistake where if I had maybe held my Opal, I would have been able to do something more powerful. Uh, sure... I'll just chomp, like, who cares? Oko is, like, a super balanced card. I really like Oko. P.O.? Balance. Well, I think I'm going to balance the last card out of their hand. That seems fine. Fine. 
I was really hoping to drop PO. I think we win this game if we drew PO or Tinker or something like that. Demonic, Merchant Scroll. There were so many outs. Their last card was Flusterstorm. Ah, I see. Okay, I mean, it is what it is. Now I think they should turn off my Soul Ring. I guess they can attack and make a food as well. It's totally reasonable. I just think hitting my mana here is pretty reasonable as well. Oh, they're going to play an open a jet and stand it up. Sure, it's fine, I guess. All right, I mean, PO is still probably winning. There we go. Uh, <laughs> it's not winning. Four, apparently four was not enough. Um, okay. Never lucky. Actually true, Log. Actually true. Okay, so if they don't... They can't hit me for lethal here, so I can still PO again. I think we just vamp for a Snapcaster Mage. See what they do first. We go to two. Okay, sure. I think a Snapcaster Mage is better than a second PO, and it's better than a Yog Will. That's game. At two life would be a bold play. This is basically deterministic. I have basically two more POs off this. No reason to demonic yet. I'm just going to draw through my deck. I guess I can probably demonic soon. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. None of the choices I make really matter here. Uh, yeah, we can just demonic. Mentor. And then snap demonic time walk. Why are we doing this, Slasher? Let's let's go. Let's go to the next game. Maybe they went for a bathroom break. I didn't use time walk, have I? I mean, it's not like I'm down on time, so it doesn't really matter much to me.
I don't have a mana crypt in play either, so. All right, that should be lethal, right? Let's do one more for fun. Just in case my math is bad. I don't have a swords in my main deck. I, I ain't like that. All right, minus 20. Uh, okay, so probably attracts an oath. We saw Demonic, and we saw Dig Through Time. Uh, so same board plan as versus uh, Dan in round two, where are we boarding in um, Fluster, uh, Negation, and Prismatic Ending, and Fragmentize, and we're taking out Island, Opal, Opal, and Mystical. Believe that was our plan. Yep. Okay, next game. Uh, another seven card no play hand. If this like bolus was like an ancestral, it probably would might keep it off of draw for turn, probe for turn forces, but. This hand's no good. This hand is better. Yo, what's up, Neil? Alright, I can F6, as they've seen in my hand. Gonna slam a Lavinia. That's a force. Good, so good so far. Let's see what else they have. Another underground sea. Well, we're pretty far ahead in this game, I would say. Okay, second Lavinia. Orchard. Time walk, sure. Probably letting an oath resolve and just deferring it. That's kind of an awkward draw. I guess I think I can just play it and then um, bounce back my Sapphire. I wanted to basically be able to hold open Fluster Storm. Maybe I don't have to actually play this Opal out. It's probably fair. Okay. Well, one more off color uh, non Opal Moxin gives us a nice PO. Probably still POing for some amount here. Probably two. Just cantripping, getting our fluster back out there. Just gonna bury them in cards here. And they don't really have a lot of recourse. Should be an oath. Just gonna force this one now because I don't have a Teferi to use. I think I'm just gonna get rid of the Narset. I'm in a pretty good spot where I don't need it. Okay. <laughs> 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 
Slasher hit me with, uh, I should have cut Teferi for Hercules. I don't think there was a Teferi in game one, though, so... I definitely would have boarded out Hercules in game two. All right, we're just going to keep pressing forward. This is now going to be around six of eight. They're going to have a Lurus as a companion. That's exciting. I guess that means we finally hit Jeskai, which unfortunately not a great matchup, but totally playable. Let's see what we can do. Have a nice basic fetch land brainstorm combination. This matchup is entirely about keeping your mana in play and then picking a very uh picking a run a window, trying to make a window when they have some kind of weakness and get some things resolved. Oh my god, what? Oh, it, this is not just guy. This is the Sheer Khan Turbo Vault Key deck. Interesting. I don't think I would play a, an island as my first card again this time if that was if I knew that would be the case. Uh, in this case, we will be jamming this brainstorm and trying to find some some value. Oh, they're gonna fluster it. Oh, they're gonna ancestral. That is unfortunate. Yep, I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> it's definitely good. Alright, just put lands back, draw land. We did find our Moxin, though, so we have some ability to PO now. wonder if we're just supposed to PO for two here. It looks a little bad. I think I'm just going to wait. Hold open Fluster Vamp. Maybe we'll go. Like, if they tap out, we can Vamp for Tinker. Fluster back up. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm certainly regretting casting that. Oh, God. They're just passing with 8,000 mana open. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for end step PO for two, try to bait a counter spell, untap, and go vamp Tinker Fluster back up. Yeah, that might not work anymore. They have Fluster here. I don't think I'm long for this world, unfortunately. My opponent's draw is a little on the strong side. You should call it uh, raining cats and... Well, there's no dogs. I want to try to find some pun based on forecast. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, they have st if they hard cast a force, we can win. But if they alt cast a force, we lose. Yeah, whatever. What am I doing with my life here? I just don't have like counterplay. <laughs> oh, oh, they have negation. Oh, that's a nightmare. Okay. Well. <laughs> uh, we're going to get bodied by this Lurus. Oh, uh, boy. Oh, upkeep vamp. Can't beat that. I guess I should have flustered it. Well. That would have bought me a turn at least. I mean, I made the plays that I wanted to make, but. So if I had bought a turn, I would have died. I mean, I think the mistake here was just going for um, Brainstorm. It was a really bad, really, really bad play, it looks like. I didn't really consider getting Ancestral. I wanted to make sure that we were doing something powerful. And I definitely paid the price on that one. Uh, good news is we have a lot of really strong options here. I do think I will play single swords as well. A lot of our cards are just super, super strong. Uh, it's going to be quite tough to cut all the cards I want because there's just everything is good against this deck.
Mm-hmm. It's really hard to fit all these cards in my deck. Oh, Snap looks a lot better, actually. Maybe I can get rid of Mentor. Doesn't seem necessary. Still like Vamp. I, I, I that that one's like really on me. I just, if I just play in a in a stronger way, I think we would be super super ahead in that game. Maybe they just have so much mana that they wait a turn and we can't fluster it and we lose anyways. I guess that's possible, but. Mm, I guess this is just a pass angle. <sighs> I really don't want to counter this. It's really rough to have to be... Lotus twice, though. Their deck is quite good at using Lotus in comparison to my deck. I wish I could take that whole first game back, but it's doomed. Really just looking to, like, resolve a Karn against my opponent. Their deck doesn't really beat that. I mean, I'm sure they have second fluster. The deck has four flusters in it. But better to fight this now. I mean, I can't imagine they would have some crazy follow-up that we would not be able to contest. And we can just time walk them by bouncing the seat with Teferi. I'm definitely not going to counter this. I'd much rather try to, like, resolve something of mine that's more powerful. Like, if I can, you know, spin into a, a Karn or something, then we're in a really good spot. Jeez. Their deck can't really beat me negating this. So I should probably just negate it. Their deck doesn't really function if you exile the Time Vault. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, you got it. So, I guess what we do is... Bounce the time vault to buy time. And then spin and see if we like what we get after. Because we know there's a fetch coming. Yogg will. That looks quite bad for me. Let's just fetch that away. Dress down Narsa. Alright, I guess we could just lose this game. Kind of crazy. They just have Volt Key in their hand plus mana drop. But I guess if we get to our next turn, we can do Narsa activate, find a PO, and win. So, see what happens. <laughs> holy, holy crap. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I feel like my opponent has drawn super well. <laughs> sure. 
Sure, homie. Oh, they don't have it. Oh my god. Oh boy. This is definitely a game. All right. Well, Po should win here. So, Let's see what we can do. Oh wait, Po doesn't win here because I don't have enough mana. Holy moly. Uh. Huh. What do I want to do then? I only have six mana. I know that my cards are dressed down land. I think it's still better to play out my Narset, activate it, and then spin. Maybe I was just supposed to bring in Needle. I chose not to bring in Needle. I could have chose differently. So I have to draw Time Walk, I guess. I should have just brought a Needle. Oh, I guess I can draw Fragmentize or a Prismatic Ending. I don't know, man. I think it just wasn't meant to be. Kind of gross. I have lots of outs, don't I? Like... Uh, this is so sad. I don't know. I think I played this round so badly. I just took actions at random. I hate my opponent's deck. I tried it, and I dropped the league. But I guess if you just draw Force, Demonic, Ancestral, Lotus, Fluster every game, it's fine. Mm, yeah, I mean, I'm dead. Nothing to nothing to talk about here. It's horrible. Slasher, have you have you played any games with it? Like it's just unplayable. <laughs> you have to be Sheer Khan. But I don't know. I played super bad, so I deserve to lose that one. All right. Yeah. I, like I said, I was I definitely made some some really key mistakes in that last round, but it was super brutal. And I, and I think I'm I think I'm done for the day on this stream. As I, I definitely can't top it anymore. So. I do think that this PO deck is fine, but you do, you need to run really hot. Um, the this deck is not as powerful as other decks in the format, and it is kind of clunky and needs things to go right in order to really perform. You need to have hands that do things together, um, and like the more this deck pushes towards interaction and you know versatility, the less powerful this deck is. And I, I really, I, I don't know, I think P.O. might have just, like, passed its time in the sun. I'm just really unhappy with how powerful my deck was. Maybe that's because I didn't draw enough Tinkers, but... <laughs> um, obviously, it wasn't just variants or anything. I didn't play very well today after, I mean, after the first round, maybe. <laughs> but um, we got bodied by Doomsday twice, and this deck is, like, so super geared to beating doomsday so that was really frustrating obviously you can have more flusters in your deck but having access to dress downs and lavinias and teferis and it's just a very good deck for doomsday and if at this point if this deck isn't like having a good doomsday matchup then i'm not really sure if there's a, a super convincing argument to be playing this deck over playing doomsday itself i guess like this deck is typically better against shops than doomsday would be but there's not that much shops in the metagame it makes more sense to just be playing doomsday uh sandy dog had recently just said in, in the in uh in one of the discords that yeah isn't po just basically doomsday but with like slightly different function like we're playing uh fast mana instead of dark rituals and that kind of thing and it's kind of true it's a one two it's you know it's a a one and two combo deck that has some controlling elements so i think the answer for me is coming up for the third showcase i probably need to learn some better decks maybe the answer is just learn doomsday i was practicing a couple other decks for this tournament i had an interesting jewel shops build i had um Agravine lined up as a as a and I had Squee uh Countervine, both of those I had practiced a little bit, but I wasn't super thrilled with them, so I decided to just run back Doomsday for or run back PO for this tournament. And I, I wasn't really happy with um wasn't really happy with the deck and definitely could have probably played uh, slightly better too. So I'm not gonna drop from the event, but I, I don't really want to stream any more rounds and I'm not gonna make top eight, so I think I'm just gonna end the stream. So if you like this video, make sure you check out the rest of the videos on the YouTube channel. New videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I will see you then.